This is a message to all my supporters of this podcast. I'm introducing a new supporters program. You can contribute a small amount as a one-off payment to show your love for this podcast. Thank you in advance for all your contributions. Hi, my name is Mark Hayward. Um, I'm here talking to you on my podcast and I wanted to have a conversation with you about talking about sports and business, something that I'm incredibly passionate about on both. Um, I have a keen passion for cycling, for rugby, for um, cricket and uh, motor racing to an extent. Um, And I'm also passionate about business and about entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial mindset and uh, uh, corporate world. So both these two things I'm going to talk about today um, are things that I'm hugely passionate about. Um, The reason why I'm putting these two together is to compare and contrast the sort of behaviours, the mindset, um, the 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 physical things, the the things that you can spend your money on, etc., which relate to both sports and business. Um, uh, business uh, sports has turned more into a business, and uh, often you get Deloitte that are talking about who is the richest football club in the world. It either bounces around between Real Madrid, Manchester United and Barcelona. I think something like the last 13 or 15 years, it's either been one of those three. Um, so um, don't get me wrong, although sport is now a business, I'm going to talk about it from a athlete's perspective rather than from a corporation, i.e. Real Madrid or Manchester United Corporation. Because I think it's interesting to be able to do some sort of uh, compare and contrast between them because they both have very uh, interesting and uh, valuable uh, areas and there are similarities and there's also differences. So um, so what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about sports at first and then I'm going to talk about business and then while I'm talking about both we can sort of inter- interlink between the two um <clears throat> so athletes uh people like uh Ronaldo uh Messi uh if you're into football or someone like Johnny Wilkinson um are obsessives now they are completely obsessed with those jobs that they have to do in that <coughs> role as fly half striker whatever it is Now, this means that they get in first, they leave last, they are practicing. So, for example, David Beckham, David Beckham practiced free kicks over and over and over and over. He was obsessed by being able to do that. Um, And you find that those sorts of people are the best, are the top, are the the elite. Um, in business, there is an obsessive nature as well to work harder than anyone else, to uh, to grind, to hustle, to work, um, all these sort of American terms which are used. But essentially, you need to be able to work hard. You, there is no shortfall for if you're starting a business or in a corporation, you need to work your ass off to be able to get results. So in that sense, there's actually uh, some sort of similarity between them. Obsessives work very well. Uh, people who are dedicated, who who are all about repetition. They repeat their actions, whether it's phone calls, whether it's cold calls, whether it's free kicks, whatever it is. Um, in sports, <clears throat> you are trying to constantly improve. You're trying to uh, you're trying to be able to kick with your left foot, to pass with your left foot, to pass with your right foot, to header, uh, to control, to defend. And there is an idea of constant improvement for a footballer. So with experience, you understand where the ball is more likely to occur because you've been in those situations before. Um, Not saying that, so for example, a 20 year old uh, might be exceptionally talented and they might also have that idea of no fear. Um, which entrepreneurs have as well when they are young as well. Um, 
<clears throat> but when you start talking about a 26, 27, 28 year old in football, specifically in rugby as well, um, that is when they're at their peak because they've got that balance between they're still exceptionally talented, but they've got a few years experience to understand what they need to do in their job. So um, a, a, an idea of constant improvement is something that they they dedicate themselves to um constant improvement very much ceos um you hear the stories that uh, ceos read 60 books a day um workers read 60 uh, listen to what what 60 hours of tv and there is distinct difference um and that is the whole idea of being able to constantly improve to be able to understand different viewpoints uh business leaders i think that some have a yearn to earn, yearn to learn and earn um some don't some know what they're good at and they just repeat that in different sectors different industries so there is a slight difference uh but equally there is a bit of uh duplication there as well um <clears throat> Sports is, this is a real difference between sports and business. A sport, let's just take football, for example, it is all about a win-lose scenario. You want your team to score the most goals to win the match. There there are three scenarios. There's a win-loss and and a draw. And it's incredibly important for uh, sports people to base their careers upon how many games they win. Now, with and, and therefore you win a league, you win a cup, you win the Champions League, whatever it is, um, and it's all devised around a win-loss scenario. Business is slightly different. Um, we've talked about it before. Um, actually, to be the most successful you need you need as a business person you need to be able to create a win-win scenario where you win uh with the amount of money you're charging your clients and they also win with the huge level of service that you're providing to them so this is different this is distinctly different and i would say if you're ever in this scenario it's very easy when you're young you 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 think business is all about you winning and everyone else uh peers and colleagues are losing often uh you can be successful and a peer colleague can be successful at the same time and you can both get promoted you can both get uh new clients you can both get business so <clears throat> i think that's one thing that you i would say is definitely different um i would say uh, the whole point about uh, the boss, the gaffer in the in the football scenario versus you are the boss if you own your own business. Um, as an athlete, as a footballer, you are part of a team. Even if you're the superstar, you are still part of a team, whether it's 11 or 15 people. It is one team and its success is based on the team winning. In business, it's all about you are the boss. You control the finances, the accounts, the sales, the marketing, the legal, uh, the, the, the the payroll. You, you, your responsibility is the whole of the business. And uh, where the athlete doesn't take any responsibility of losses, where the boss, where the manager does take the responsibility. So... In this sense, I would say that the the footballer actually has less responsibility um, than the business owner because the business owner is all based on them and they might have to work 12, 14, 15 hours a day to be able to get a business as a success where a footballer just needs to be able to uh, dribble, pass, kick, header, score, defend, whatever it is. Um, Often they just work the morning (coughs) and... um, As I say, you do have the obsessives like Johnny Wilkinson and and David Beckham who are there just practicing, practicing, practicing. But you can be a very good footballer and not be an obsessive. Um, So I think that's the difference in the um, in the business world. If you own your own business, it is all down to you. Everything that happens is all down to you. What good happens is down to you. What bad happens is down to you. Uh, The other thing about sports and business that is different, but it's slightly changing, is the fame game. So footballers are hugely famous. 
They are rich. They are always recognisable in the street. If you even if you play for a team like Leicester City, Jamie Vardy walks along uh, Leicester City High Street and he will be recognised. Um, <clears throat> The difference between uh, that and the uh, business people is that generally they don't take as much fame as as, as they have uh, as footballers do. Um, mainly, uh, I would say that it's starting to change. Entrepreneurship, entrepreneurs like Gary V, Tony Robbins, Rob Moore, um, Brian Tracy. These are all people that are entrepreneurs that have been hugely successful and have created a brand and created a social media following have created podcasts they do emails they do bulk emails uh, they do uh, services that they provide to people and these people are actually with social media become a lot more famous um so fame now is is more into business than it ever was but i still say that um i can't name the ceo of ibm uh, but I can name Mark Zuckerberg on, on Facebook. I can name uh, Elon Musk on Tesla and SpaceX and Jeff Bezos at Amazon. So there is a certain element of fame that has occurred with entrepreneurs and businesses that have been created uh, recently. But um, again, I couldn't name the CEO of Airbus or of uh, Boeing or of uh, GSK. All these sorts of CEOs are have a have a level of dislocation from the fame game which is probably a good thing for them because they they want to base their uh, efforts and their time on maximizing their business rather than being famous um but um so i would say there's there's a similarity and a difference at the same time um um Also, um, on a very, very basic level, um, footballers enjoy being a footballer. To choose the occupation of being a footballer, you've got to love it. You've really got to love it. Uh, You've got to love playing every day, basically, whether it's a match or whether it's training or whatever. The difference in business is you've got to, it's fun, the process, you've got to love the process. You've got to love the process of managing, of leading, of being a, even if you're a manager, that you in, you enjoy the process of managing people, managing projects, managing uh, products, managing services. You've got to love the process. So <clears throat> it's a slight difference uh, between the two because... I, I, I suppose there is, there's a lot of similarities there as well because you've got to love what you do. Like a lot of the CEOs and Mark Zuckerberg say, they, they work is not work for them; it's fun. They love doing what they do. So, and that is a very similar. There's very much a similarity of a footballer as well because they love what they do every day. They will not. They will not change. Um, so, so there is fun in both areas of uh, this. Um, the next point that I want to make is um, footballers um, are very much selfish. Um, there are footballers that play for the team, don't get me wrong, but a lot of it is being the best that you can. And you want to be the best defender, the best striker, the best goalkeeper, whatever it is, to be uh, a huge success. And although you play in a team of 11, a lot of it is based around individuals' uh, responsibilities, the way they play, the way they fit into the structure, the the, 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 the formation. But there is very much your uh, um, your Wayne Rooney's, your Deli Alley's, your Messi's, your Ronaldo's. They, they are well known people because it's very much, an, uh, although it's a team sport, it's very much an individual sport as well, and people put a lot of responsibility on the individual as a uh, as the person that they pay most attention to. So Ronaldo at Real Madrid is hugely successful, hugely uh, famous, hugely rich. Uh, but you talk about one of his colleagues, uh, one of his defenders perhaps, and they are not as famous, not as rich, and not as uh, individualistic. Um, so... Footballers are definitely promoted to be the best they can. 
<clears throat> where business is, when you're an entrepreneur, you're thinking about the biggest you can be. You want to scale your business up to a unicorn. You want it to be a, worth a billion dollars or billion pounds. And so it's a different mindset. It's not just about uh, being the best entrepreneur that you can be because you've got to be able to move that business from a one man band to a small team, uh, to a small business, to a medium sized business, then scale it up to a big corporation. So Zuckerberg has moved Facebook from him and his mates at university into a huge corporation. And so you need to be able to think about <clears throat> being the best that you can. And uh, that's incredibly important. So I think <clears throat> you need to be able to get a balance. Um, you need to be able to think as big as you can. Sorry. You need to be able to think as big as you can when you're dealing with uh, a business because most people want their business to be as big as possible um, obviously maybe let's just mention family businesses that just want to tick over keep everyone happy in the family but they are not the ambitious ones who want to or uh, uh, be in a corporation so I think that's that's incredibly important that needs to be thought about um, <clears throat> so negative times bad times in football is incredibly negative um, you have a team that is losing is in relegation zone you are in big trouble uh, the, the the team could go down could um, be demoted or relegated um and that is a negative time for everyone that's involved in the football club so you don't want to be relegated so it's incredibly important to to be able to push the team as high as they can and hopefully win the, the premiership um the difference with uh with businesses is actually <clears throat> this is actually something which goes against a lot of people's thoughts but just to really listen to this recessions are a good thing for businesses they're good. They're good thing for investors. They are the prime time to be able to pick up everything for a buck or as cheap as possible. So just think: you, every time there's a recession, there is a pound store which is selling businesses, metaphorically speaking. And you need to be able to buy, acquire, uh, learn, market more, sell more. Um, and that is a that is a contradiction with the football because a lot of the negative times for footballers is a bad time for the club. Where in a recession, although a lot of businesses worry about they're not got the same income because people are not spending as much money, but in actual fact, you get things for a hell of a lot cheaper, and you should be investing in those times. Um, so, although it probably sounds counterintuitive to most, it is actually the most important thing about recessions is investing now i listened to that from tony robbins on his book uh, unshakable and i've heard it from warren buffett um and uh, from gary v and to be honest if these guys are talking about recessions being the best time to invest um i believe them that is just it, it makes sense People are worried about their businesses, they're selling up, they're closing down. And that is a time where you can pick up stock, where you can pick up businesses, you can pick up things for cheap prices. So next time you're, if you're a business owner now, and next time we go into some sort of recession, I would say keep your eye out for those bargains because they are there. You just have to be a bit bold and invest. <clears throat> Um, and so my last point is the difference between a footballer who is part of a team and uh, doesn't they, 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 like a striker who doesn't score goals is uh, it does have a negative uh, or, or, or a, a lot of criticism. Um, but a striker can be scoring goals consistently and still be losing. <clears throat> and the difference between between footballers and business is that uh, in football, the gaffer, the boss, your manager, your coach takes the responsibility of those losses. Um, in a little bit, I find it a little bit unfairly, and sometimes there's not enough criticism on the businesses, uh, on the on the um, on the teams, on the players. Um, but essentially, 
the gaffer takes all of the responsibility the the manager takes all of the responsibility for those losses uh, it's his uh, formation it's uh, it's his selection that gets majorly criticized and he is the one who loses his job footballers keep their jobs they never lose their jobs because they've been relegated um in business you are the boss the buck stops there with you you are not part of a team. You are the person who's making all decisions. So that is that your the relationship is not with the athlete. It's with the it's with the boss. It's with the manager, uh, with business. So you do need to make sure that you um, are there and you are making the most of those opportunities um, as a businessman. So uh, you are the boss. You take responsibility. You take the good times. You take the bad times. They're all down to you. Uh, that is that is probably a big that is a big difference between the two sports and business um so that's where i'm going to stop now um the sort of conclusion is there's a lot of similarities between uh sports people and business people there but there is also some definingly different things about sport and business um a couple of things that 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 mean a lot to me is the difference between win loss and sport and win-win in uh, in business. I think that's incredibly important. Um, the difference between losing in a football match versus recession in a business, and you are the boss versus the footballer keeps their jobs if they lose. I think they're the most important points from what I've spoken about today. So, um, so I'm going to wrap up there. Uh, please look out for me on Twitter on Mark Hayward one six nine. I also. Um, have all my videos my video blogs on youtube and you can check out all the lee's podcasts is mj hayward podcast on itunes and stitcher thank you <laughs>